Hi everyone, this is Barb with Lost in Floss. So this is going to be a long awaited video about how I finish my Christmas stockings. I've made uh, four Dimension Gold ones and three other ones um, starting <laughs> almost 40 years ago. So the technique I use is, um, the only thing that's really altered over the years is, I think I used interfacing, like um, sew on interfacing back when I did the very first one and now I've switched to using SF 101. So I hope you find this helpful. Many of you have asked about um, the technique I use, it's, you know, really a beginner sewer can do it. All, all you have to know is how to sew straight. So really not, not hard at all. Uh, let's see, the, the most important things you need are um, fabric to use. I don't use felt on the back of mine. I use fabric on both the back and on the inside and to make the little loop. So you'll basically need three times the width of your stocking and then a little more for the loop. And I think originally in the video I said make the loop three by six, but um, I switched that out to like two and a half by six and you know whatever you can use a 3 8 seam a 5 8 seam whatever thickness you want to achieve is um what how you'll cut the width of it but uh six inches for the length is pretty good you don't want it too tiny that it's hard to get on the stocking holder and not too long that it's way down <laughs> in front of the chimney so um uh, I have to, <laughs> there's always an apology, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to make another one, another stocking. I'm going to start on that next. And um, so my tripod was, is broken. And so I got like totally off kilter <laughs> in, in uh, taping it. So it's not the, you know, it's, Definitely not the mecca of um, tutorials, but I think I give enough verbal descriptions that you'll be able to figure out what I mean. And by all means, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at lostinfloss2, the number, at gmail.com, and I'll try to answer whatever you need to know. Uh, oh, and I started giving a supply list. So you need the backing lining fabric. So just measure the length of your stocking and figure out if it'll fit in the width of that fabric. If not, add a little bit more on. Um, you need SF 101, enough, like two pieces of it, the length of this and width of the stocking. Thread, uh, let's see, just a sewing machine. Um, I use a bobkin to turn my loop, but you do not have to use that. You can always uh, do a top stitch loop by like folding, 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 and stitch. Let's see, what else do we need? Um, an iron, definitely an iron, um, and I don't know. I use best press. If you're just pressing on the lining side or the backing side, you probably could just use a little steam if you wanted. Um, yeah, so, you know, not, not a lot of supplies needed. And um, as I said, this is the first one that I made years ago. That's... This is how I did it, and it seems to work well, and uh, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So, um, here we go, and uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> it's taken me enough time <laughs> to 
get ready to film this video. Um, well, to begin with, finishing the stocking is a little time intensive. Um, then I had a little bit of a dilemma trying to pick out the backing fabric. And really, I went back and forth. But this is what I decided on. I think it picks up the color of the reindeer beautifully. And also, I added some gold. Oh, I guess you can't see that. Some gold beading and a few more gold beads there. I think there was some gold uh, supposed to be in the stitch originally, but because the other ones I've done, the first one had a lot of, not a lot, but just touches of, of gold beads in it. So I kind of wanted to make it so that they all presented a unified front. And um, so I just, you know, did my own thing. Um, so long ago, I, I think, I think that's about it on the changes I made. But anyways, um, as you can see, I, you know, this isn't perfectly ironed because we're going to be cutting off a lot of this. So, like, why waste time? Um, the most important thing is, <laughs> my back is a mess, but I'll show it to you anyways. I just make sure, you know, it doesn't matter with full coverage so much if you have extra threads. Um hanging because you wouldn't see them from the back but I'm going to go over and um, usually what I do is I'll hold it up to the light I don't know if you can see that but I'll be able to see if there's any loose pieces in this area but you know probably just give it a good trim and make sure that the main part of the the stocking is pressed well and you need um, to figure out how much lining you need for this technique. Um, what you'll need is to measure your stocking, and then you'll need actually three pieces the size of the stocking. And don't forget that um, two of them have to be mirror images. So if you just have a little remnant or something, make sure you take that into account. Um, and the other thing is sometimes like mine get really, really kind of out of, out of skew. So I'll just take it and kind of stretch it like this on the diagonal. I don't know. This is, you know, this is just the way I do it. I can't say, like, don't tell me everything I'm doing wrong because it's just the way I've done it. I, my first stocking I did, um... I use this technique, let's see, it's 38 years old. So, you know, and they're still hanging together. So um, it's not a perfect technique. I, I don't know my very first ones if I used um, this SF-101. My tripod has a broken, broken leg. So it's kind of out of balance to begin with. And then I started flailing around. So um, looks like we're back in business, but the other thing I use is this SF-101, and I think it's by Pellon. And what it is, it's a woven fabric on this side, and this side is fusible. And you'll be able to tell one side from the other just by the rough side is the fusible side. So you want to make sure you would always put that on the back side of your fabric or your stitch. So... The steps I'm going to do, make sure the top is relatively straight. Make sure that you trim off the loose threads that you want on the back. And then um, I'm going to cut a piece of Pellon, uh, the SF-101. It doesn't really have to, I, it has to go like if I had a cutout area, <laughs> I could use more of a scrap. Let me see. I try not to piece it. Um, I don't know that it would really matter. So in this, it doesn't matter, like, uh, you know, if it's a little bit on an angle. But um, I'm going to, I'll just rough cut a piece. 
and then I'm going to apply it um, according to the manufacturer directions. So we're going to take the rough side of the pellon and apply it to this side of the wrong side of the stitch. And um, I'm going to put you, pause you while I go do that. And then we'll go on to the next step. All right. So now <laughs> I did what I told you not to do, but um, I fused, I trimmed all the loose threads and then I fused a piece of SF 101 to the back of my stitching. And you can see it just gives it so much more body. I don't put fiber fill in mine. Um, just because I don't know about that. Thing. I first started doing these. So since I wanted them all to have the same look, I basically have just kept doing them the same way. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd put it in now. But um, okay, so we're done with that part. Um, so eventually, we'll come back to the lining fabric. But then what I do is I just take a regular ruler and usually I'll start with like an inch just to give it um, a little bit more leeway. And you're just gonna take a pencil or if you use a special marking pen for fabric, whatever you want to use, because um, this will be cut off. And just mark, mark it like that. Um, and then I notice like a lot of people kind of make this curve not as pronounced, but I really like to shape it. So I'll mark it quite a few more times here because I'm going to make this pretty curvy. So just keep going around. And really, you know, like there's lots of ways to do things. And this is probably not, you know, <laughs> real professional, but I think mine turn out just fine and it's fairly quick and I like it. So see these, these are the areas where I really see a lot of they'll just be kind of whoop, instead of the major curve that I like to put in. It's just a preference thing I guess. Okay, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, but I'm not gonna keep filming this because I think you get the point. All that I've measured with the little hash marks an inch around, and I'm probably gonna trim this more, but this is just to get it more stocking shape. Um if you wanna go right to your final seam allowance, by all means do so, but I just feel a little bit safer doing it this way. So I have it marked along the outside with the pencil line, an inch all the way along. And next I'm going to cut away the excess fabric. Okay, now it's all cut out. Kind of looks stocking shaped. And I'm gonna show you the back cause I did what I told you not to do. But I think it's gonna be fine. Um, cause after the next step, I'm gonna come back in and probably only trim this down to like a half inch. Um, so in this area where I don't have quite have that, that'll be fine. So next step I'm gonna do um, is just take this to my sewing machine and put my stitch length at the longest I can make it. So it's like a basting stitch. And I'm gonna stitch along the whole stocking just so that I have that placement so when I'm sewing from the wrong side, I'll be able to get nice and close to the stitched area uh, without really having to worry about where it is. So 
I'll be right back. So now I'm back from my sewing machine and it'll probably be easier to show on this side. Um, my tension is still not good. I need to take my machine back in. I just, I don't know, maybe it's time for a new machine. But anyways, um, so to, to be able to get the stocking finished really close to the stitching, this gives me a line when I do my stitching, my um, stitch piece to the backing, I can stitch right along over this line. And when I turn it right side out, the stitching will be real close to the seam, which is what I like. But now that I kind of have that step done, I'm going to go and trim this seam allowance down to um, a half an inch, just because I really don't need an inch. It'll be easier to handle if it's a half inch. So. Okay, I noticed when I was doing this remarking that um, right here, I'm, I'm really off on my basting stitch. So I'm going to go back in and just do this little section again. And if there's any over here that needs to be tightened up a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm going to take my lining fabric and lay it out yeah. to cut one of them. And I'm going to take the fabric, put my stocking right side down on it. So we have the right sides together. And you know, like normally when I'm sewing, I pay great attention to green lines, but um, I think it's, you know, you can just kind of get a good, good estimate of what is pretty straight. And I'm gonna cut around the cut edge of the stocking, cut all the way around. So using this as my template. All right, I have it cut out. So now I'm going to take this piece and on the back side, oh, I probably, well, I have a half inch seam allowance, but I'm going to fuse another piece of SF 101 to the back so that it'll give the stocking more body on the back side as well. All right, now I've used my back of the stocking that's fused with SF 101 as a template to cut out my two lining pieces. So have the mirror image. I'm going to take these and sew these together with a half inch seam allowance going all the way around and leaving maybe a couple inch open in the toe. And then I'll start up and sew all the way to the top. And don't, don't sew this part. And then I'm gonna do almost the same thing. I'm going to sew from this side where I have my basted line and I'm gonna sew all the way around from the top, all the way around and ending here. So it will leave this part open. So I'll do that and be right back. Alrighty, I'm getting ready to stitch. Now this is that basted line that I sewed from the front of the stocking. So I'm going to stitch right along that all the way around. Okay, now I have my strip of fabric for the loop. Um, I think I originally said three inches wide this way by six, but I decided to cut it down to like two and a half. And then I'm going to sew this long end with a five eighths inch um, seam allowance so that I don't have a real thick loop. And then I'm gonna use this little, I think it's called a bobkin tool. 
you hook it to one end and then get it started and it makes it real easy to turn well not real easy but easier to turn um narrow little loop things and here's my stocking i've sewn all the way around it and in a minute we'll look and see how well i did with getting the seams to match up and then i backstitched at both ends because when you pull it you don't want to have it the seams start to ravel so i'm just going to cut down the seam allowance to a very narrow little bit and then i don't know if you can see this or not but I'm not going to really worry about this too much. I'll just kind of press it with my thumb. However, however you do it is good. It's, it doesn't really even show that much, so. Okay. So then we'll just grab this little tool and stick it through and then it's like a little almost like a little safety pin so you hook i usually try to hook towards the the seam and you hook it and then you just gently start to pull keep pulling keep pressure on it and then once you get to here you can unhook it and there you have a nice little loop now if you don't have this tool you can just you know fold a piece of fabric a couple times and just like top stitch it this well um, that should be fine. I, you know, there's no real rhyme or reason to what the loop size should be. Um, and I'll probably just give this a quick little press. You want to press it so the seam is on the edge. All right, now the final reveal. So this is always the part of that to see and now normal I will be trimming this so this is just to get an idea if how I sewed it my stomach <laughs> um so it appears this will be fine um I don't see that I have any areas where I mean a little a little bit like that is fine because by the time you press the seam you won't see that okay so what I'm gonna do is turn this back inside out and then we're gonna do some trimming and that'll get more that area more defined <laughs> trimmed it all and on the straight areas you do not have to clip but this area you definitely want to clip and you want to go up to the stitching line but never clip through it um, a lot of people like smaller scissors to do this but I use my bigger ones because I know they're really sharp um, and, you know, may, maybe every half an inch. You don't have to go nuts. And up until where you achieve this straight away again. So this is the toe area. So I'll keep clipping here. So that's 
clipped all from this way all the way around to here and then we're going to leave these straight then i'm going to take this over to my ironing board and i'm just gonna like lightly press press these open so we get like a good seam on the other side and then in the meantime i'm going to take my lining and do the same sort of trimming and clipping now remember you'll have that open space at the toe that we'll use for turning so um <laughs> let me find it and i'll be back okay i think i'm happier with that sometimes you just have to do what your gut tells you i didn't bother taking out like tearing out the um the seam or anything but uh yeah you can see the difference i know if i wouldn't have fixed it i wouldn't have been happy so now we're going to attach the loop okay before i press i just want to mention one thing about this um i did not trim off where i left the opening for turning so I just left the full seam allowance there. I just kind of clips to where the stitching starts and stops. Okay, we're done pressing. And so, I mean, this isn't perfectly even, but it really doesn't matter. So that's gonna be our loop. And then this is the stocking itself. And I pressed the seams open, going around the curve. So that should give us a nice crisp edge when we turn it. And then same thing for the lining piece. And then where the opening is, I just folded, I didn't trim it, I just folded those pieces in. So when we go to whip stitch it, it'll be easier. You can see what I do with the loop. I have the seam of the loop facing towards the back of the stocking and I folded it in half so we have the folded edge down and both raw edges are up here and I centered it over this seam and I just pinned it well and now I'm going to baste over it like back and forth a couple times. Um, and then I'm also going to pin this down so when I sew this top edge, it the loop will stay down where it's supposed to be so that I can flip it up when I turn the stocking for the final turn. All right, now, so we have that tacked down and I pinned it so it stays out of the way. Now what we're going to do is take the lining, which we have not turned right side out yet, and we're going to tuck the stocking right sides together. And I'm gonna set this down while I do this step. But basically we're, we're putting the right side of the lining um, with the right side of the stocking front and back. All right, now we're going to go to this opening that we left and gently pull the stocking out. Just gotta go slow. Okay, I think we did pretty good. So basically what you're gonna have is this long tube attached to this. Um, and then where we left this open at the toe, since everything looks good, I'm just gonna take some matching thread and turn this in and whip stitch this closed because this will be on the inside of the stocking. Okay, oops. You can see that I just used a whip stitch here to close it. I mean, it's not perfect, but this is going to be on the inside, so it really doesn't matter. Now, the last step, um, 
is I'm going to put a little like little label it's my self-made label I always do um just you know saying who was stitched by the year and a little message for on the inside of the stocking and I do that using a permanent pen and a little piece of muslin some wonder under and um, I'll show you how I do it so when I went to get my wonder under out I found that I had some this little nothing print used just some wonder under already and I thought oh I can just use that I'm trying to use up you know some of the started supplies and anyways I just cut out a heart and with this let's see these are called micron um this is a zero one so it's a very fine fine point permanent marker um I just did some little stitches around and Hold on an angle, and this will flatten out when I press it down. But Bobby is my grandma name, and I put the year that I finish it, not the year I started. <laughs> and then, guess what? Um, it's just a little message we I always do with the grandkids. I, I say, guess what to them, and then they say, what? And I just says... I just says, I just say, Bobby loves her and whatever the grandkid's name is. And most of them say it back, so that's rather sweet. So I'm going to press this on the back of the lining, and then we'll be ready to turn the stocking and see how it went. Okay, that pressed on nicely. So now what we're going to do, and it's probably hard to for me to it while I'm filming. But basically take the toe and we'll stick it into the toe of the stocking. Alright, well <laughs> always a little blip, but I think I sewed this on backwards. I should have flipped flip the lining. So I'm going to, that's why I never trim this top edge. I'm going to take that off and flip it one rotation and resaw it. Okay, <laughs> that's a little better. Um, did anyone catch that? So what the problem was, was this piece was flipped. So the toe would have been going into the heel and vice versa. So <laughs> just make sure you uh, Look at that when you're doing this. I got so excited at the end, I forgot to show the final step, which is basically, now I have this, take, take the attached lining fabric and just stuff it into the stocking. And you wanna take your hand and reach all the way in that toe and kind of just like really push the lining into the toe. Do the same thing for the heel. And and then what I do is I just take it over to my iron and I go along the outside just to give that a crisp, crisp feel. So by now you've seen the haphazard video. Again, my apologies, you know, I get a D in <laughs> In tutorials although I try to include necessary steps and if I would have time to remake it I think I could do a better job so hopefully for that uh, fifth dimensions gold stocking I'll be working on soon I'll I can replace this one and and it'll be a little bit prettier so I really think you know I encourage you all to try if you're hesitant don't be, because once you get that SF101 pressed on the back of your stitch piece, you'll just have so much more confidence. And, you know, again, you could maybe trim that right away to a half an inch. For some reason, I just feel better, like, having a little bit more and then trimming it down later. If, you know, maybe it's because I just want to check to make sure the shape has enough curve to it. So, um, yeah, I really like giving yourself the 
guidance of having that basting line right along your edge of your stitching, it it makes it so easy because you know you're going to be close to 100%. And if not, you know, like I did, I, <laughs> I debated, I was going to let it just go. And then I'm like, no, I won't be happy with this. So what does it take? I had to turn the stocking back inside out anyways to do the trimming and clipping. So, you know, at that point, I just stitched it a little closer and probably took all of 40 seconds. So, but um, thank you for watching. If you haven't watched my regular videos, um, please do. I do a lot of my own, well, probably like 95% of my own finishing, um, including, you know, using some retro frames and stuff like that. And so um, I, you know, that all takes time too, but I like to share my knowledge with you. And um, I encourage you to watch like real finishers like Vana Twisted Stitcher. I mean, she she shows you the right way to do everything. Um, my way is just my quickie, get it done way. So um, yeah, I think, I think really, I encourage you all to try and you can do it, really. Thumbs up, you can do it. <laughs> so, oh, did I show you the finished product? No, I don't, I don't know if I did on the other video. So I am more than happy with how this turned out. So this is Preston's, my fourth grandchild, Santa. And he's flying over the little town. And the backing lining fabric that I lamented over I just love it now that I cut it out I think it's it's not so overwhelming but it just it picks up these colors so well and I I always try to put more of an timeless elegant fabric on the back of my stockings because I really would like them to stand the test of time unlike the the first one I did for my daughter. I don't even know what's on the back, but I'm sure it was something cutesier. But um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And um, again, please let me know if you have any questions. And now the 120th Harley uh, Festival is going on. So now it's time to get outside and do some riding and enjoy some music. So I hope you're all having a good day. And I'll be back with a regular video, I hope, really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.